It's that time of the month. You've just been through crazy cravings, fatigue, mood changes, you name it. And to top it off, now you have to deal with consistently feeling bloated and a scale which isn't showing you numbers you want to see. Juggling weight loss sessions, your diet, your workout sessions and your menstrual cycle can be challenging. But as I've seen with so many of my female clients, it can also be your superpower. To understand how your menstrual cycle influences weight loss, we have to get a few basic principles down. After we've discussed these basic principles, I will do my best in giving you a clear roadmap on how to take control of your menstrual cycle and get in a great weight loss routine. So let's look at the normal menstrual cycle. It's important to know that not all females have the same regular pattern. Conditions like PCOS and many others play a large influencing role. Nevertheless, let's look at this visualization. The typical 28-day menstrual cycle can be divided into four phases. The early follicular phase during which the period takes place. Then we have the late follicular phase. In between follows the ovulation stage, followed by the early luteal phase, and lastly the late luteal phase. During these phases, hormones also fluctuate. We are primarily interested in three hormones, testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen. Estrogen starts low and peaks right before ovulation, and then makes its way down again towards the end of your cycle. Progesterone, on the other hand, starts off low and only rapidly starts to increase during ovulation. It hits its peak in the middle of the luteal phase and thereafter comes crashing down just like estrogen. So why is this important to know? Well, hormonal fluctuations are one of the primary driving factors in how we feel and how well our body functions. For example, optimal estrogen levels will activate a compound called AMPK. This compound enhances fat use for fuel. Optimal estrogen levels also increase insulin sensitivity, all of which are needed to help you regulate total fat stored on the body. Oh, and estrogen has also been shown to interact with a hormone called leptin, which is a hunger hormone. Optimal estrogen levels will also increase strength, just as testosterone will. Low estrogen levels, on the other hand, affect thyroid function. And as we know, thyroid hormones primarily dictate metabolic rate. Taking us back to the hormone chart, we can clearly see that there will be a time where you are at a high functioning state and a time where you are not at such a high functioning state. It's generally believed that women will achieve peak week, thus their strongest point somewhere between day 4 and 14. This is usually during the late follicular phase. Another super interesting fact about the female cycle relates to the hormone called progesterone. As we can see on this chart again, progesterone levels sharply increase right after ovulation. And its primary role is to prep the body for pregnancy. If you've ever noticed, the week right before your period starts, your cravings also increase. This is primarily due to association between the rise in progesterone and metabolic rate. Thus, your body literally needs and stores more energy during this time. A question always asked by my female clients is, why would you weigh heavier during certain times of your cycle? Most women would testify that the week leading up to and during their period, they experience bloatedness. The science behind this physiological process is beautifully complex. But in a nutshell, the low progesterone and estrogen levels during menstruation is associated with hormones such as aldosterone, which affects how the kidneys regulate water. And therefore, you can assume that you're attaining a little bit more water. Some females report weighing up to 2.5 kilograms more during that week. And it's okay. Now that's a lot of physiology and can very quickly become confusing. But here are my top tips on how to optimize your training and diet while keeping your menstrual cycle in mind. Tip number one. You will experience more cravings right before your period starts. Thus, be aware of this. Don't have unhealthy snacks laying around in your kitchen. And if really needed, increase your calorie intake for the week back to your basal metabolic rate. Being in a excessive calorie deficit during this time could completely derail you if you haven't built proper habits yet. This also speaks to when would be the best time to start your diet. Usually, right as your period is about to end is a good time to start. You will not have as much cravings and you'll make some good strength gains which should help motivate you. My second tip would be to keep in mind that during the late stage of your cycle, you will feel more fatigued and your training cycles might not feel great. Thus, don't feel bad to do a semi-deload week. 
decrease the volume and intensity of your sessions a bit, it might just do you good. Lastly, don't overthink it. I know this sounds like a lot, but in essence, be easy on yourself. Some weeks will be good and others not, but consistency is key. And the weight on your health scale doesn't show the full picture. In fact, we can almost say that we shouldn't be comparing week after week, but rather week one with week one and your week two with your next week two. If your diet really is on point and you are progressively pushing yourself during your workout sessions, you will see a drop in fat. It's inevitable. I really hope you gained some valuable info from this video. If you have any other questions, feel free to pop them in the comment section or even send me a DM on Instagram. I love to help. In the next video, we'll chat a bit about fasting and how that affects weight loss. I hope to see you there. And as always, remember to please like and subscribe. All right, see you in the next one. Cheers.